It's Wednesday, February 3rd, and this is your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski, bringing you the area's latest local news. And later in the show, on this week's Talking Transportation, Jim Cameron told you so. The committee appointed to figure out how to pay for Governor Malloy's 30-year transportation plan just released a report that says it would take highway tolls, higher gas taxes, and higher rail fa fares to pay for those projects. But you'll hear more about that coming up. Rob Adams, of course, joins us with weather and a Nutmeg sports update. And Donald Ang will take a look back on this day in history. But first, on to some of the stories we're following today. A pedestrian was killed and Interstate 95 was backed up for miles after an accident Tuesday afternoon. Connecticut State Police said that one pedestrian was killed and a tractor trailer was involved in the incident, which happened in the northbound lanes near exit 10 in Darien. The accident closed the middle and right lanes on I-95 North between 9 and 10 for hours in the afternoon. The lanes were reopened by about 4 o'clock. You can check for updates on that story at DarianTimes.com. The Trumbull Police Department responded to a burglary attempt at a Sunnycrest Road home around 1040 in the morning yesterday, which resulted in an hour-long manhunt through, the old, through Old Town Road in Trumbull and into the Chopsy Hill Road area in Bridgeport. Police say that 19-year-old Geraldo Maldonado of Forest View Road in Bridgeport was charged with carrying a dangerous weapon, interfering with an officer, and criminal attempt at burglary in the first degree. Maldonado was arrested close to his home on Forest View Road following the lengthy foot pursuit, and he could face additional burglary charges, according to Trumbull Lieutenant Leonard Sinto. The suspect faces numerous charges for this incident, and an investigation will be conducted to determine if he's responsible for other recent burglaries. Lieutenant Sinto added that during the pursuit, Maldonado was carrying a handgun, which he dropped when confronted by police. He then continued running south towards the Merritt Parkway, while several Trumbull and Bridgeport officers, as well as canine units, responded to the area. Several area schools went into lockdown as a result of the foot pursuit. Police confirmed later Tuesday afternoon that they recovered the weapon and it turned out to be a BB gun. But you can get more on that story at TrumbullTimes.com. Bridgeport police made an unusual arrest Tuesday involving a Santa Rhea priest allegedly practicing the dark arts. According to the Connecticut Post, Felix Cuba Delgado, who was being sought by Massachusetts police for grave robbing, was arrested Tuesday afternoon, but officers weren't prepared for what they found in the Hallett Street basement. Police Captain Armando Perez said, we found two human skulls and bones that appear to have come from the remains of two people. Perez said, this was like nothing we've ever seen before. Perez said they found altars throughout the first floor apartment and basement, many covered in blood. According to Perez, Delgado is a high priest in the Santeria religion and practices the dark arts. He said people in the neighborhood are either from Puerto Rico or the West Indies where this religion is practiced and they were afraid to say anything against Delgado for fear he would put a curse on them. Along with the human remains, police found ominous carved figurines, candles, antlers, flowers, miniature coffins, as well as religious statues and chicken carcasses scattered about Delgado's murky fieldstone basement. Strange symbols depicting stars, the moon, and a skull were also drawn in pear, pale chalk on the cellar's floor. Delgado, who's 40 years old, was charged with being a fugitive from justice, while police said they continued to investigate him for drug allegations. He was being held pending extradition to Worcester, Massachusetts. And in Stratford, Joe Gresco will succeed his friend and former boss Terry Backer in the State House of Representatives after winning Tuesday's special election. Gresco, who currently serves as the 5th District Town Councilman in Stratford, received 1,339 votes in defeating Republican Susan Barksdale, who received 873 votes. Gresco had worked for Backer for the last five years of his term in the State House. Backer, who won 12 terms for the General Assembly, died on December 14th. The new state lawmaker took a little time to celebrate at Paradise Pizza in Stratford on Tuesday, but he'll get right back to work in Hartford. He will be sworn in on Wednesday, today, prior to Governor Dana Malloy's State of the State address. Gresco gave credit to his old friend and mentor for the good weather on Tuesday. And with the race over, Gresco said he wants to do the best he can for the town, including getting state funds for a variety of projects like the Stratford High School renovation. More on that story at StraffordStar.com. 
And in some other news today, two New York City brothers will be spending the next five years behind bars for an illegal operation that supplied wholesale quantities of heroin to customers in New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. Jimmy and Miguel Estevez were set up by federal agents to purchase 50 grams of heroin in Trumbull. It happened on November 25, 2013, when the 20-something brothers traveled from New York City to an undisclosed location in Trumbull to complete the transaction. Thereafter, investigators intercepted numerous calls and text messages that established Jimmy and Miguel were obtaining large quantities of heroin from multiple sources of supply and used multiple vehicles to transport the drugs to purchasers. Deirdre M. Daly, the U.S. Attorney for Connecticut, said 25-year-old Jimmy from Brooklyn and 29-year-old Miguel of the Bronx were sentenced Tuesday by U.S. District Judge Michael P. Shea in Hartford to 60 months in prison, followed by four years of supervised release for trafficking heroin. And Governor Daniel Malloy reported this week that ridership is up all across the New Haven line, with one exception, the New Canaan branch, which declined its ridership in 2015. New Haven commuter rail line for 2015 surpassed 40.3 million passenger trips, up 2% from the prior year, and setting an all-time record according to a newly released data from Metro North Railroad. The New Haven line is the busiest commuter rail line in America. In 2014, ridership was 39.6 million. The so-called inner portion of the New Haven line between Stanford and Grand Central Terminal had ridership growth of 3.6%. Commuter trips were up 3.2% and discretionary travel was up 4.3%. The outer portion between Stanford and New Haven was up 1.3%, including a 0.2% growth in commuter trips and a 2.3% growth for non-commuters. The Danbury and Waterbury branches had significant ridership growth of 9.4% and 2.9% respectively. However, the New Canaan branch had a decline of 1.7% in total ridership in 2015. The data released yesterday shows that commuter ridership on the New Haven line was up 1% in 2015 compared with 2014, while non-commuting discretionary ridership was up 2.9%. But we're going to switch gears now and throw it over to Rob Adams, who's going to give us a look at today's forecast. Rob? All right, Kate. Good morning, everyone. We've got a rainy day around the area, fairly dark outside, high in the mid-50s with a south wind from 11 to 14 and chance of precipitation 90%. We're looking at upwards perhaps of an inch of rain possible before it all goes away tonight, mostly before about 3 in the morning. Heavy at times, patchy fog, low 45, with a south wind 5 to 15 miles per hour. To Thursday, a slight chance of rain before 10 in the morning, patchy fog before 9, otherwise partly sunny, a high near 53. Wind not a problem, 5 to 8 out of the west. Chance of precipitation diminishes by then. To Thursday night, slight chance of rain and snow between 9 and midnight, then a slight chance of snow after midnight. Mostly cloudy, low around 30. To Friday, mostly sunny and a high near 41, mostly clear, low 27 for Friday night, Saturday mostly sunny 44, Sunday mostly sunny 44, Monday is partly sunny and 37. Now right now looking at Tuesday, just to give you a little advance notice, there is a chance of snow for Monday into Tuesday. Right now only about 30%, but you know, as they often talk about the various models and all of that, the models indicate that there is a chance for some snow to hit us on Tuesday. We'll keep an eye on it. We'll keep you posted. We'll panic when the time comes to panic. Around the region right now, Ridgefield at 47. Shelton right here has 47. And in Darien, it's 50 degrees, Kate. All right. Thanks, Rob. Well, we're going to take a break. When we come back, Donald Dang takes a look back on this day in history. We throw it back to Rob for a Nutmeg Sports update. And we have a lot more news coming up after this.
When you experience a sports injury, you want to get better and fast. Coastal Ortho Express gives you direct access to orthopedic care quickly. Their physicians are fellowship trained in sports medicine at world-class universities and are also team doctors for area football teams. For specialized personal care of sports injuries, go to Coastal Ortho Express. Open Monday through Saturday in the iPark building, 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk or CoastalOrthoExpress.com. Coastal Orthopedics, keeping you on the move. It's the new year. The to-do list is long and it's easy to feel pulled in many directions at once. Your professional, personal shoppers at Walter Stewart's are ready to check groceries off your list by shopping for you. Save extra time this year and spend it doing more important things. Great food and wine delivered to your home with the same day service. Shop Stewart's online at stewartsmarket.com. For more than 50 years, Triple S has been Fairfield County's expert service for carpet, upholstery, and drapery cleaning. We provide the best in repairs and in-depth restoration, understanding fabrics and how to properly clean and restore them. Our staff will come to your home to clean your wall-to-wall carpet to perfection. We can also pick up your fine carpets and bring them to our facilities. With locations in Norwalk, Stamford, and Stratford, Triple S will get the job done fast, big or small. At Triple S, you can count on our people as well as our cleaning. Find us at triplesclean.com or 203-847-8. Hi, I'm Rob Adams with my good friend Donald Eng, and we're the home team for Nutmeg Sports Monday through Wednesday at 2 o'clock right here on the HAN Network. We are the place for all things Connecticut sports, so come hang out with us on Nutmeg Sports. Don? They don't call him the best color man in the game for nothing. Nutmeg Sports, 2 o'clock Monday through Wednesday right here on the HAN Network. Wednesday, February 3rd edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski, and it's time to throw it to Donald Ang to take a look back on this day in history. Check it out. It was music's darkest day. But first we go to 1913. The 16th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution is ratified, authorizing the federal government to impose and collect an income tax. Uh, looks like that's uh, about, that sums up pretty much a lot of Americans' feelings right there in that cartoon. 1961. The U.S. Air Force begins Operation Looking Glass. For the next 29 years, a doomsday plane is always in the air with the capability of taking direct control of the U.S. bombers and missiles in the event of the destruction of Strategic Air Command's command post. 1971. New York police officer Frank Serpico is shot during a drug bust in Brooklyn and later survives to testify against police corruption. Many believe the incident proves NYPD officers were trying to kill him because he would not go along with the prevailing attitude of graft and corruption. Serpico was later awarded the NYPD Medal of Honor, and if you live in Stuyvesant, New York, and you're interested in an honest politician, he's running for city council this year. And finally now, we go to 1959, where there was this. We interrupt this program for a special news bulletin. Three young singers who soared to the heights of show business on the current rock and roll craze were killed today in the crash of a light plane in an Iowa snow flurry. The singers were identified as Richie Valens, 17, Buddy Holly, 22, and J.P. Richardson, known professionally as the Big Bopper. The aircraft chartered from the Dwyer Flying Service crashed near Mason City, ironically the setting for the prominent musical The Music Man. The pilot, Roger Peterson of Clear Lake, Iowa, was also killed. The three singers had appeared at the Surf Ballroom in Clear Lake, Iowa last night and were on their way to Fargo, North Dakota. Their small chartered plane crashed in a lonely farmyard about 15 miles northwest of Mason City. Cause of the crash was due to inclement weather conditions. That, of course, the deaths of rock and roll musicians Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and J.P. the Big Bopper Richardson in a plane crash near Clear Lake, Iowa. The three were part of the Winter Dance Party Tour, but the old bus they were on was subject to constant breakdowns and had lacked heat, causing a drummer to get frostbite. A uh, frustrated Holly chartered a small plane for himself, Waylon Jennings, and Tommy Alsup, but Richardson had contracted the flu during the tour and asked Waylon Jennings if they could switch places. When Holly learned Jennings was not going to fly on the plane, he said in jest, well, I hope your old bus freezes up, to which Jennings replied, well, I hope your old plane crashes. A humorous but ill-fated response that haunted Jennings for the rest of his life. That is your look back in history, and I am Donald Ding. All right, thanks to Don. Now it's time to throw it back to Rob for a Nutmeg Sports Update. <laughs> 
All right, thank you, Kate, and good morning to Miss American Pie and everyone around the world in the mood for some happy news. Let's talk sports. It's National Signing Day, and many local players are signing their letters of intent today. Among the signers are Timmy Graham, Lucas Niang, Michael Collins, Scooter Harrington, and Jackson Ward. And the, we have uh, some footage and images that we will give to you later on during Nutmeg Sports. I know Mike Suppy was out at Shelton High School. Dave Stewart will be over at New Canaan High School, so we'll have very various images and again video from throughout National Signing Day on Nutmeg Sports at 2 o'clock. In fact, Dave Stewart intending to be here for the show. We move on to girls ice hockey now. Georgia Cassidy scored twice. Kiki Tropsa, Hannah McLean, Sky Vandenbroek, Emily Ferguson, Cassidy Schiff had one goal apiece as Darianne not, uh, topped Stanford West Hill Staples 7-0. Yes, it is indeed a mouthful. Cassidy added two assists as well. Emily Giannunzio had a rough night in net for Darianne. Marianne. Three saves for the shutout. One of those nights where she probably could have had a sandwich or a chocolate truffle if she so choose. In boys ice hockey, it was Ridgefield over Norwalk McMahon, eight to one. And really, that's it for scores last night. An extremely quiet night. But of course, today with National Signing Day, plenty to talk about. Like I said, we'll do so on Nutmeg Sports at two. But I do have a heavy, a heavy schedule for you later today. In boys basketball, West Hill is at St. Joseph Staples home for Norwalk Fairfield at New Canaan. It's Wilton at Darien. Bridgeport Central is at Ridgefield. Ludlow home for Trinity Catholic. Danbury at McMahon. Greenwich at Stamford. Girls basketball, St. Joseph at West Hill. Staples at Norwalk. Central home for Ridgefield. McMahon at Danbury. Ludlow at Trinity Catholic. New Canaan at Ward. Darien is at Wilton. Stamford is at Greenwich. From boys ice hockey, Trinity Catholic hosting Norwalk McMahon. It's Fairfield Prep at Darien. That sounds like a mighty good game right there. Six o'clock at the Darien Ice Rink. They will drop the puck. And again, Fairfield Prep under 500, but it's still Fairfield Prep. It's kind of like the Yankees coming to town, or the Patriots, as you might say. Trumbull at West Hill, Stanford. Staples West and Shelton hosting Greenwich. Greenwich in need of some wins, especially after a bad loss the other day against Hamden. Wilton at New Canaan. Hamden at St. Joseph. Shepog Litchfield is at Be uh, Bethel Brookfield Danbury. And Brookfield Bethel Danbury also tomorrow. By the way, that's tomorrow. So sorry, I got that copied into the wrong spot. We move over to girls ice hockey. It's Ridgefield and Ludlow. Trumbull home for Greenwich. Stanford at Wilton. Stanford at Greenwich in wrestling, Danbury and Staples in wrestling as well, and Haddam Killingworth at Fairfield Ludlow. Finally, boys swimming and diving, Greenwich at New Canaan, Darianne home for Wilton, McMahon, Norwalk at Ridgefield, and Danbury is at Trumbull. With sports, I'm Rob Adams. We'll have much more on Nutmeg Sports at 2 today. A lot of signings going on today, Kate. Yeah, it's good that's stuff. That's good news. All right. Thanks so much, Rob. Well, getting back to a little more news today. This just in from Patty Gay at the Weston Forum. Recent attacks on dogs by a rabid fox and a pack of coyotes have caused Weston Animal Control Officer Mark Harper to issue a warning to Weston residents. He said, be careful with your pets, especially at night in the early morning. Do not let small dogs out unattended. The warning comes following an incident in which a red fox attacked a dog and then attempted to attack an animal control assistant that was trying to subdue it. You can see a photo there. The fox was later determined to have rabies. In another incident, a Weston family's small dog was attacked and killed by a pack of coyotes who were then heard howling in celebration. But you can get more on that story at thewestonforum.com. And on to some Wilton news. Sometime between January 21st and January 25th, police suspect that someone burglarized a construction trailer at 135 Sarah Hill Road and stole items that had been housed within it. According to police, these were mostly contractors' tools. The burglary and larceny are still under investigation. And anyone with information is encouraged to call the Wilton Police Department at 203-894-6260. The Connecticut Audubon Society announced that it has banned the use of drones at all 19 of its sanctuaries because of concerns that they are likely to disturb wildlife and cause an annoyance to visitors. In establishing this policy, the organization believes it is the first in the state and one of the first in the nation to ban drones. Although there has only been one recent incident of a drone at a Connecticut Audubon sanctuary, the organization is instituting the ban proactively in anticipation of increasing drone use across the nation. The Federal Aviation Administration announced last week that almost 300,000 drone owners registered their unmanned aircraft in the first 30 days after the FAA's new online registration system went into effect last year. 
The Connecticut Audubon Society 19 sanctuaries are located in Fairfield, Westport, Weston, Reading, New Milford, Hampton, Milford, Pomfret, and other areas around the state. In 2014, drones were banned temporarily in all national parks. They have been prohibited in San Francisco parks since last year. And in Easton, a black lab mix was bitten on the neck and ear by another dog January 30th at the Easton Dog Park on the Helen Keller Middle School campus on Sport Hill Road. The other dog, identified as Jilly, was already in the park with its owner and went after the victim dog when it walked into the park, that according to police captain Richard Doyle. The victim animal sustained puncture wounds to the ear and neck and required treatment for its injuries. The owner took it to the Poster Animal Hospital in Westport where it was treated and released. The dog that attacked was up to date on its vaccinations, its owner said. However, they did not provide their name or proof of vaccination to the victim's dog owner. The victim dog owners called the Easton Animal Shelter the next morning. The victim dog is licensed in Easton and up to date on his vaccinations. But no dog named Jilly is licensed in Easton, she said. The owner of the dog has not been found. She said since the victim dog has been vaccinated, it should be kept at home on quarantine for 14 days just to be sure. Officials say they hear a lot of complaints about dogs getting into fights at the dog park. All dogs should be vaccinated for rabies and spayed or neutered before taking them to a dog park, she said. All right, let's throw it back to Rob for another quick look at the forecast. Rob? All right, Kate, it's a rainy day with a high in the mid-50s. Wind out of the south from 11 to 14 miles per hour. Tonight, probably an inch of rain before this is done, mainly before 3 tomorrow morning. The rain could be heavy at times with patchy fog low around 45 and the wind out of the south from 5 to 15. Thursday, slight chance of rain before 10 in the morning. Then we're going to clear out partly sunny, high near 53. To Thursday night, slight chance of rain and snow perhaps between 9 and midnight, but they're not talking any accumulations of any uh, extent. Slight chance of snow after midnight and a low around 30. To Friday, mostly sunny high 41 Saturday mostly sunny high 44 Sunday mostly sunny high 44 as well and again we're just keeping an eye on a potential storm Monday night into Tuesday around the region right now we're looking really mid fifth mid upper 40s to, to low 50s Darien at 50 Ridgefield at 47 and here in Shelton it's 46 degrees Kate all right thanks so much Rob well we're gonna take a break when we come back Jim Cameron's gonna be talking transportation that's coming up on your coffee break after this Darien Sports Shop is a unique store because it's a family store. A busy mom can come in with kids in tow and find everything she needs for them and even find a dress for herself for Saturday night. And if she's in a rush, she can simply go home and order it from us that night. We'll deliver it the next day. The Darien Sports Shop. We're pretty on the outside and amazing on the inside. Conveniently located with free and easy parking at 1127 Post Road, Darien, Connecticut. Or shop us online at dariensport.com. Darian. Tired of all the bull? Relax and enjoy the experience of buying a car at Pamby Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram. No bull allowed. I really wanted something that felt like a home. Coming from a big house, I wanted the feel of a home as opposed to a condo. New Canaan is six minutes down the road. New Canaan's a beautiful little town to walk around. I work in Westport, my commute is 20 minutes. It's close to Westchester where my family is, so the location is ideal. There is no other town home that compares in the area. This is where I want to be. Well, there's still a bite out on the water. Most anglers have decided to stow the gear for the winter. Just because Mother Nature isn't cooperating doesn't mean you can't see the latest models of all your favorite gear. With two convenient locations, it couldn't be easier to get your fix of summer. Boater, beach bum, fisherman, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The Dock Shop, 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, or on the web, dockshop.com. I'm Denise DiGregoli, the host of The Drive on the HAN Network. Join me Tuesdays for some motivational, intelligent talk with a little humor as we visit with people who live their lives mindfully. Tune in to The Drive live on Tuesdays, 1230, here on the HAN Network. I'm John Kovach. I'm a newspaper editor. I'm a high school football coach. I'm a television presenter. And I want you to love fishing as much as I do. 
Tune in to Yankee Fisherman Thursdays at 1 on the HAN Network. It's like going to the tackle shop without leaving your office. You are watching the HAN Network, and you're not alone. Nearly half a million viewers enjoyed our broadcasts in the first five months. Advertise on the network that reaches Fairfield County, Connecticut's most engaged audience. Contact Jessica Murren, Advertising Director, at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. I hate to say I told you so, but I'm Jim Cameron for Talking Transportation. Commentary and analysis on getting around in Connecticut. And just as I recently predicted, Governor Malloy's hand-picked Transportation Finance Panel has finally issued its recommendations for paying for the governor's 30-year, $100 billion transportation plan. First off, the governor's plan is not a plan, but a wish list of projects for all 169 towns and cities in the state. It has been vetted by no one and has no priorities, though the commissioner of the Department of Transportation, Jim Redeker, says about two-thirds of the amount, that would be $66 billion, would have to be spent for repairs and a replacement of what we already have, not any grandiose scheme for monorails flying down the middle of I-95. Interestingly, as it began work last summer, the Transportation Finance Panel was not allowed to debate the merits of anything in the governor's plan, so all they could do was suggest how to fund the whole thing. Atop their newly issued report is a telling quotation. It says, If something is worth having, it's worth paying for. Duh. But that's a pretty soft sell on this mega plan, given the unpopularity of their funding suggestions, which include raising the gasoline tax two cents a gallon for seven years, hiking bus and rail fares two and a half percent annually, introducing electronic tolls on highways with congestion or time of day pricing, and what they call land value capture at transit sites. That last idea is a doozy. It suggests that if someone owns private land next to a new train or bus station and that land appreciates in value, the increased taxes collected by the town should be shared with the state. That's perilously close to last year's Machiavellian bill that would have created a quasi-state agency, the Transit Corridor Development Agency, all of whose members would be appointed by the governor, and which would have the power of eminent domain on any land within a half mile of a bus or train station. That idea was rejected last year, but is already being rethought by OPM, so watch out this session. But before you set your hair on fire, don't worry. All of this is moot. Nothing is going to happen. And here's why. The governor says that none of his panel's proposals should even be discussed until there is a transportation lockbox in place. And that won't happen until at least November's election and will depend on the passage of a constitutional amendment ballot question. Why the year's delay? Because the Democrats in the legislature don't want to have to vote on something as unpopular as tolls or taxes before the next election. And meanwhile, even Governor Malloy seems distracted from his transportation mega plan, as he is rumored to be lobbying for a cabinet seat in the Hillary Clinton administration come 2017. And the presidential campaign season will doubtless see Governor Malloy on the road quite a bit on behalf of his could be boss. So don't look for a widened I 95, high speed rail, or new deep water ports anytime soon. The legislature will be busy with more important things, like getting re-elected, before they can deal with funding the Malloy plan. Jim Cameron for Talking Transportation. Thanks, as always, to Jim Cameron for his insights. That's going to do it for today's episode of your Coffee Break. Coming up at 12.30 today, CT Pulse. We speak to State Senator Tony Wong. We go over some of the stories we're following this week. And Doug Smith shows us more of his rejected editorial cartoons. That's at 12.30. Nutmeg Sports, of course, on at 2. And we'll see you tomorrow at 11. Have a great Wednesday, everyone. <laughs>